um, we need to have a, a regular checkup to see that the doctor so that the doctor can help you with your problem and you find out some early some complication in the early stage so that you can help properly treatment for the patient okay that was very good i like it the last sentence as you can see you slow down a little bit and it, it sounds better already I like your pronunciations. You will go further, really far. If you speak slowly and try to focus on that. The other thing I like to make sure is your tone. I told you guys many times and class pay attention to this. Speaking is, is more like an art. When you sometimes you have to speak really loud, really fast, and then you hold there. You give silence and you draw attention to you and then keep control of that because that's the key to keep patient not sleeping. Well, unless you are an anesthesiologist, I'm not saying that Dr. Din here is, but in general, you don't want to make your patient sleep because you really want to, their attention, especially at the end, you would like to give them education. All right, I like Dr. Long, or, and then um, we can give feedback along the line, but today let's go fast and make sure I like to hear all what you are presenting. Any other comments, Andin? Uh, I think that uh, at the end we will um, we will tell the whole class it's easier because now we move on fast, so it's, it's much better. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Good job. Now next time, next number when we call, I like you to just tell me your name. Don't just say, hey, I'm going to test it. Tell, hey, my name is A, I'm from this, I'm doing this. It's nice to meet you. Or you can start with that and then keep going to the presentation. Um, let's start with number two. Uh, so, so uh, my name is Noang, and uh, yeah, nice to meet all of you. Um, so my case is a 47-year-old female with a two-month history of uh, bilateral uh, hand, wrist, and elbow uh, joint pain with uh, and uh, swollen. Um, she has a uh, morning stiffness for one hour every day, and uh, uh, she has nice sweat and fatigue. Um, so uh, uh, to approach my uh, patient with a joint pain and uh, um, swollen, I uh, at first I will introduce myself, um, my name, um, my role, and I will confirm the patient information, their name and their age and um and then i will uh, um, explain the reason why i uh, have this conversation with them uh and finally i want to make sure that my patient is comfortable with uh, this uh conversation so the chief complaint here is uh chon pain and uh, swollen in um hand wrist and elbow joint um i will start uh by uh asking what brought you in today um, and uh, and then uh, the patient will, will, will tell me that they have joint pain I will ask um, uh, when did it start how long uh, how long did it happen to you um, and uh, uh, where is your pain um, is it is it continuous or is um, Okay. Just hand it up for one second. I'll let you think. Class, make sure this is what I like you to do. When your classmate presenting, why don't you take note on her history? Because I will call a random number from you guys and ask you to what else you need to ask in this particular case. So I let all of you take notes and see what is your class presenting. This is a technique that you learn during lecture and also later on as a resident or attendings, you learn to take quick notes, just write keywords in what she just said. Okay, go and go ahead. Yeah, and um, 
is it continue at all and does it come and go um, if it come and go um, how long do you have your pain and uh, um, did you do anything to reduce your pain like um, uh, taking medication and does it work um, what makes your pain worse and um, uh, along with your pain is is there any um, health condition that are worry, worry you um, and the patient maybe say that they have a swollen and um, they, uh, they feel that their uh, the jaw is uh, difficult to extend uh, in the morning for about like one hour. Um, Hold on, maybe I'm not, and, uh, give me one second. When you ask for medication that helping or relieve her pain, what medication you would like to ask her? I want to ask, ask about the, um, uh, 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 okay. um, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory um, drugs and um, also uh, corticoids that are, yeah. Why? Um, because in in, uh, in Vietnam, people with uh, present to the doctors with uh, joint pains, uh, they usually um, um, be given with um, and okay, and said, <laughs> um, and uh, and some in, in some case, if, if that pain is too much, they will have like offer um, steroidal um, in, injection to get into the joint. What if the patient taking Panacetamol, a brand name for Tylenol in the US, what would you think if they take that pain and the pain improve, what would you do? Questions, as I can. <laughs> okay, can you... uh, this, is, this is important for you guys when you ask for medication. Would it make a difference if the patient taking ibuprofen, Aleve, or whatever NSAID they take versus paracetamol, and one's helping, the other one's not helping? What is the difference? If you don't volunteer, I pick a number. This is very important for this lecture. You should know this, especially if you learn about the fever lecture. All right, let's try number 11. Number 11, can you come to the podium? So I think uh, the difference when uh, the patient taking paracetamol and um, ibuprofen is that the, the effectiveness of the drug because when um, in um, a, a joint disease, I think NSAIDs has more effective than the, than paracetamol. So if if ibuprofen is not effective in this patient, uh, this that that means uh, we do uh, we do not to uh, prescribe uh, paracetamol. I, I thought that very good, excellent. I like it. That's that exactly I'm looking for this class. Okay, good job. You can go back to your. Uh, and let me explain to the class further. NSAID, so you have three features for NSAIDs. It's pain relief, it's anti-fever, but it's also anti-inflammatory. So it decreases three things. Compared to APAP, which is Tylenol, in general, you pain control, fever. But it has some mild, but not a lot of anti-inflammatory um, inflammations. Can you see the difference between the T, the two medications? Class, make sure you know this, right? And just for pharmacology, make sure that people have liver disease, they will not likely take acetaminophen. And make sure that people with end-state disease, end-state chronic kidney disease, you don't want to give NSAIDs. So for, for you, just want to remind you this. Okay, Ngọc Anh. Yeah. Okay, let me ask you this, Ngọc Anh. 
the your class may explain me to you. Yes, um, I understand. Okay, I so am a bit. Never forget this question when you ask it. Okay. Okay. Go on. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so continue uh, to my um, medical history, uh, taking medical history. Um, okay. I will ask about the associated symptom uh, with um, the child pain, uh, and uh, the patient had, uh, said that she had um, also uh, his, her joints also swollen, and. Um, and she, uh, she had, she feel like uh, after wake up in the morning, um, she feel uh, that her jaws is really difficult to um, move for like uh, one hour, and um, she also had uh, nice sweat and fatigue. Oh, Why one hour? Information that you've given me is, is one hour. I just <laughs> report the case. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, it's, yet to it's, try, yes. Think about it. It's, it's more than uh, 30 minutes. Yes. For, minutes. Why 30 minutes? Because we have, um, I don't know. I, I cannot explain, but I, I know that there are some disease which have the morning stiffness less than 30 minutes, uh, such as in the um, um, systemic uh, lupus um, um, erythematous disease. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let, let me, this is an interesting question. Let's see if <laughs> any smart, really smart. Okay, class, any, any idea why the question in this 30 minute morning stiffness. Why the patient wake up? And we like to know how long her hand become really stiff or frozen like this for half an hour versus less half an hour. Why? Okay, this is the owner's point. I won't pick anyone, but really, if you really know, if you really listen to the lecture, you, uh, you may have some idea. No? Yes? Come on, guys, you're all really, really smart. Think about it. This is the habit that I like using as a student and along the line, physician later. Whatever we ask, history or symptom, that usually there's a reason behind. We don't ask 30 minutes randomly. Uh, we don't ask why how why your chest pain lasts for a couple of minutes and then it's go away, which is always all the time chest pain, right? So there must be a reason why. And let me tell you briefly and one can go. This is how we distinguish between inflammation joy versus non-inflammation. And why it told the minutes? Well, because that's the time that for our set way to go down to control it. So it takes that amount of time usually for the inflammation will be less. And that's how total the minutes we come, which is a rough estimate. If a patient present with more than or more than 30 minutes, it's likely the patient has inflammation joint problems. If less than 30 minutes, it usually due to osteoarthritis. And recall, osteoarthritis is also a type of inflammation, but mildly, not very high. So this is, I know this is a challenge question for you guys, but think about it. Almost every question in medicine, uh, there must be a reason behind that. Got one? Go ahead. Um, and then I, I, I want to make sure, I want to ask that uh, whether she had a fever or, or not. And I'll, um, if she says yes, then I will ask, uh, did you measure your temperature and uh, yeah, using uh, <laughs> the template that I have done for fever in the homework to ask more about fever. Um, so no yeah. Fact, if the patient has fever, does it mean the patient had infections? Yes. It's, um, actually, uh, uh, we can... Let me ask you again. So the patient had fever, you think the patient had infections? Um, 
not at all. Yeah, beside, beside, okay, so beside. You, you said yes first, and now you say not at all. What does it mean? <laughs> okay, uh, beside uh, infection, it's maybe because of inflammation. Um, yeah. So, the patient will ask so you it's not just all. Patient uh, okay, my all patient. Yeah, if, they, if I have fever, doesn't mean I have infection. And if you say yes, and then you say no later. Usually the answer is you can say more than infection, a fever. However, there are many reasons why you could have a fever. And, and you can say that, uh, but just don't just say, oh yes, you have infection. That's a very dangerous statement. And that um, I strongly encourage you to not think like this after the fever lecture, because you know that many, many reasons you can have fever, right? It's not just infections. Hello, hello, I think that uh, no, I'm just uh, running, running out of time. Oh, yeah, that's right. Ask uh, some questions. Okay. <laughs> question and you have uh, some break because some people have to answer the question. But I found that your interviews uh, is not very concentrated on your case. Okay, should okay because too long. Okay, you just go around again. Just merely go around, around, like you run the horse, go around, around, yeah? Okay, okay, next people, uh, Dr. Wynn, maybe call the next number. Okay, thank you, Dr. Dean. Okay, let's start with number one. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so um, my, my, my case is a 28 male presented with uh, right knee pain, uh, swollen erythema, and fever. So uh, first of all, I have to introduce myself, who am I, and what I'm going to do to this patient. And I, I have to check the patient information and then make sure that he or she is comfortable for asking questions and doing the examination. So first of all, I will ask the reason why they come to my clinic by asking what brought you in. And um, the chief complaint is a pain of the knee. So I would know uh, when did it start? Um, how long was the pain and um, how was about the pain like it, does it come and go or it just stay there and as the, the serum uh, I will ask the patient to write uh, the, the severity of the pain from 0 to 10 and then I would ask about uh, what they had to, to relieve their pain, like, uh, did they take any medication, uh, what type of the drug, and um, can they relieve the pain? I would also notice about what factors make them feel worse. And then I would notice about some associated symptoms, especially the fever. If patient has fever, I would notice more like uh, the severity of this and uh, uh, does they take any medication that can relieve the fever um, and so on, some associated symptoms, other symptoms. And then I would ask the patient about their past medical history, um, especially the disease that are related to this, uh, complaining of this, uh, this time, like any pain for me before. Uh, I would notice more about the job, if they had to do anything that may damage the, the joint, yes. And I would also notice about the lifestyle. Do, do they use uh, drugs or any IV drugs? Like in, in my case, uh, is a IV drug abuser. And then um, some other factors like uh, drinking alcohol or smoking tobacco. I would also notice about their family history. 
everyone have the same problem like him. Um, <clears throat> Let me ask you a quick question. Yes. What drug do you care about most? Um, like uh, the drug that makes you addicted. Like um, heroin or something, but I think that's kind of hard for him to answer me. So I have to be very sensitive to ask those kind of questions. <laughs> so can I, I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you. What drug they can usually inject by themselves into their vein? What drugs? Like um, heroin or uh, yes. What's the common name for heroin? <laughs> Oh, I like um, eyes or weed, those kind of uh, addictive substance. I, I don't really know the, the common name of that. Yeah. Okay. Make homework and think about it, okay? Even in Vietnamese names or in English, think about what's the common names. Let's do that. Okay, Class, yes. uh, I'd like to make sure that uh, to kind of one side know, but when you ask for IV drug user, make sure you know the common name because nobody, I'll tell you, very rare people say, hey, I'm a heroin addict, I'm a cocaine, okay? I don't say that. They, they have something, okay? Whatever, angel, whatever, you know, mushroom or whatever they call it, make sure you know it because as a doctor, you should know the common terms in Vietnamese or in English. Okay, that's the key word from this. Go ahead. Yes, um, <clears throat> and, um, and then I would um, uh, continue to uh, ask him his allowance to do the physical examination. Uh, I would firstly uh, check his fetal size and look for any high temperature, uh, his blood pressure. And then I will check for any kind of uh, inflammation or infection in his body. Uh, like I will, I would check his uh, lips, his tongue, his um, uh, mucous membrane, and then I would uh, have a look around all the body parts to to determine the size of the infection or the inflammation, like the the lungs. Uh, his abdomen, um, his um, uh, his heart, or his um, neurology system, and when I when I rule out all those signs, I would um, take more focus on his uh, joints because he is having pain in his right knee joint. Uh, so first, I would uh, look to see any signs of inflammation like uh, erythema swollen um, uh, and then I would touch to feel any warmth in that uh, joint and then I would slightly move the joint to see if uh, it may uh, increase the pain and check for any signs of uh, fluid in the joint space. Um, Yes, um, yes, and uh, I think I I should also notice about his skin because uh, if he has gonorrhea, uh, infection, um, he may have some appearance on his skin too. Yes, I'm, I forgot about that. Yeah, and when I um. I'm done with the examination. I will think about some differential diagnosis. So, um, I'm a young male with a history of using um, uh, drugs, a drug abuser uh, may come up with um, septic arthritis um, with uh, gonococci or non gonococci or other. Um, diseases that may affect um, one or two joints like gout or zero gout or uh, osteoarthritis for one joint. Um, yeah. It is for osteoarthritis? 
for one town. <laughs> and I would uh, think least uh, about osteoarthritis for one town because it's really for young people and and usually the patient would have a long period of pain, not just one day. And usually they would not come up with fever or swollen. It's just rarely. Yeah. So uh, about um, gout or pseudo gout, patients also have uh, some other episodes before, and they usually attack the metatarsal phalangeal um, uh, toe. Uh, yeah, that is the uh, top, um, topical signs. But it can attack your knee, so I would not rule out it. And, and for septic arthritis, if um, it is very hard to determine if it is caused by gonococci or not. Um, sometimes if uh, a patient infected by gonococci, they may have other symptoms in their skin or their genitals, but um, it's not very often. So we have to do the investigation to determine between the two. So that's what I'm thinking of this case, so I have to do some investigation. Yes. Thank you. Yes. What is the number one concern for complication? Complication? Number one concern in this case, or complication? Uh, I would think of a septic arthritis because the, it's, I know that it's quite common on uh, IV drug user. Yes. All right, let's stop right there. Class, what is your number one concern? In fact, this is the emergency. This is the number one thing you must do in this case. This is a young guy, IV drug user, present with a picture Southlight septic arthritis. What's your number one concern? And one finding on a physical exam you must do. Uh, just turn on the mic for... Um, hmm? Yes, yes. What is that? Um, I think maybe he may have some kind of um, uh, social disease, like HIV. Okay, that's a good call. Okay, let me call up a number from the class if you guys have a uh, Come on, number 12. We, we need to move fast, guys. We, we have a lot of students behind, so let's do it. And I like all of you take note from this case because it is so important. <laughs> Yeah, I'm Thao. Guys, guys, uh, guys, no Vietnamese. Guys. Okay, go ahead, Thao. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, about his case, I think uh, um, um, because it's very serious in uh, inflammation blood. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. that, that's a good thought. You're almost there. So class, uh, take home point from this one. Number one thing you have to rule out or evaluate in this case, acute endocarditis, okay? So people present with IV drug user and they present with septic arthritis, you must make sure that the patient did not have endocarditis. Because think about it, if the bug go onto the joy, it's already past the heart. Make sense? Because you inject the vein, IV drug via the vein and the bug get to the vein, it has go to the heart and from the heart inject whatever, right? Think about it. So your number one thing is while you examine the joy, you must listen to the heart and find any new murmurs. So the take home point for all of you from this case is endocarditis can present with septic arthritis. Okay, make sense? Okay, thank you. Um, next, next case. Okay, how about case number three? Number three. 
Yeah, thank you for your reminding. It's uh, something wrong with the connection, and now we're all back. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, in my uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm still thinking of. Um, it's a rare condition in Vietnam, and I I haven't experienced one, but I know of those cases. Yeah, and endocarditis. So we have to look for any like murmur when you oscillate the heart. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Yes. 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 Okay, let's go to case number two. I think that case number two, all done. We have a one, a two, seven. Oh, we, oh yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, we have two. Okay. What, how about you and then you just call a number? <laughs> Let me call. Yes. Okay. Number five. Okay. Her name is Thai Chow. Yeah. My case. Oh, sorry, wait. Sorry. My case is 22 years old female presented with one day left knee pain, swollen, and left ankle pain, abdominal pain. Erythema vestula on hand and legs. My name is Yao. I'm the fourth year student in Kanta University with uh, Dr. Wen. Nice to meet you. Um, uh, I will confirm your detail. And I need to take your history presented con con complaint to diagnose your complaint. So, can I take your information? Okay, first, I, uh, I will ask about the knee pain and ankle pain in the left. When did the pain in the left knee and left ankle start? Does the pain come and go or continuing? If it uh, come and go, how long the pain lasts in one time? It is worse or better than when it started. Does anything appear to improve or worse? Does the pain move to anywhere else? Uh, on scale of 0 to 10, how severe is the pain? Are there any symptoms that appear associated with the pain? In this case, it associated with abdominal pain, uh, every tumor bustula on hand and legs. So I will ask about the symptoms. When did both of two symptoms start? Uh, what is the bustula feel like? Is um, itchy, swan, swollen, burning, or something else? Uh, does anything make it better or worse? About medical history, I will exploit it about her immune deficiency disorders, her allergy, her surgeries. Then I will ask about her patient social history about smoking, uh, drinking alcohol, and daily living activity, physical education, and her hobbies. After that, I will take her last medical history and um, I will let her display in her trance. So you want to and her knee? Yeah. 
then take her vital size, take her blood to check her blood pressure, white white blood cells, and blood it. In this case, I diagnosed did it septic arthritis. In the treatment, um, in this case, I will use antibiotics because uh, septic arthritis is because the bacteria are come from the trunk by um, on the walls. So let me ask you this. So what information from the x-rays of the heat that would change your name? Do you understand my question? Yeah. Because I think this way is difficult done to look for the trans damage. I'd like to be more specific. What kind of damage? Mm. Okay, class, if you're looking for an x-ray of the knee, like in this case, what information you would what information would change your management would change your plan number three case number three can you give me an answer number three cheating Yeah, when we have the X-ray result, because uh, in the arthritis there is uh, some kinds of with the damage, uh, the, the, and some kinds of non-damage, we will have uh, a diff uh, different uh, treatment plan. I like to know what kind of damage that you would change your treatment plan. Uh, maybe uh, is it, uh, there are some uh, erosion. Okay. And how would it change your antibiotic? Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe I think uh, when we decide to change the antibiotic therapy, we need the, uh, the, the, the my, my, we need, need to uh, have some uh, microbiologic test. Okay. Yeah. So you need culture from the to guide your antibiotic treatments. But uh, my question is, what the x-ray finding will guide your antibiotic plan or treatment? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't, uh, I don't know how. Okay, so class, you don't need x-ray for this case. Mm -hmm. my point? You don't need x-ray for this case because whatever she have, erosion or whatever finding on the x-ray, won't change your management. She still needs antibiotic. So the take home point is don't order tests unless it change your management or it change your plan. Does it make sense? Okay. So a lot of time we order tests, we like to do this because yes and yes. But think about it. We order tests because you know that the result of the test, whether negative or positive, will change the patient plan. If it won't change, don't order it. Okay. So that's, that's a take home message from this case. Thank you. Okay. Um, Hello, Will. Yes. I think that we, uh, we make a break now and okay. give them five minutes, exactly five minutes break, and then we go back. But before okay. we have a break, just remind you about what Dr. Uh, Win say, and everyone have your own case. <laughs> So you have to question 
specifically about your own case. I know that you already practice about own cause growth so practice. You, you have to ask everything, every question. But now you have to specifically to your own case and your question, your test and your reason why you do that, why you do this. Because everybody may not, may don't know everything, but because you, you're on your case, so you should have more knowledge about that and you share with your colleague, okay? Okay, so take a break, five minutes, exactly. Now is five minutes after uh, my, my time, five minutes after 10, I am not sure, but uh, maybe after nine eh? or something like that. So um, we go back at, um, after, after 10, okay? That's it, yeah. Okay, thank you. See you in five minutes.
All right. You guys ready? Still, some people not go back yet. I think it's, it's a Vietnamese style. Eh? <laughs> okay, guys, uh, we have 10 more people, right? And then we have 10 more case. Uh, okay, let's go. We, no, we have 11. Oh, I thought we finished five cases. Oh, it's only four cases? Oh, yeah, four cases. Okay, now I, I just call number 10. All right, number 10. Not show up? <laughs> Just turn on your camera. You know, you waste a lot of our time. We turn on your camera and... Hey guys, uh, make sure that you, uh, can you hear me? Uh, be on time. Um, no, Hello? We can hear you, but I, I got yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, number 10, please. Hello, Nan. Hello, everyone. Um, so my case is a 78-year-old female uh, present with upper back pain for three months. And then her family noticed the patient has a shortening recently. So uh, when uh, uh, when the patient uh, come to come to the hospital with um, the shift complaint is uh, the upper back pain. So I am um, the first thing that I um, uh, I'll introduce myself to the patient and. Mm, and make sure you check uh, their it, personal information. And so um, I um, I asked the patient, uh, and the patient, uh, the reason why they uh, why they come here and what um, what's brought you here today. And um, in this case, uh, the uh, the patient ship complaint is a uh, um, uh, uh, back pain. So, and so I'll ask, uh, it starts suddenly or gradually? And, um, yeah. and uh, I need the patient uh, point me the exact location of the pain and uh, to and I asked, uh, does the pain travel to and somewhere else? And um, I asked, how long does the pain last? Uh, maybe uh, uh, maybe a couple of days, a couple or a couple of months. Um, what? So, what does the pain like? Uh, uh, I want the patient uh, describe the pain for for me, and uh, is is this constant pain or uh, does this come and go? Um, oh, so 
uh, I ask what makes the pen worse or better. Uh, and the, the final thing, the final thing I want to I want to know if uh, the patient had had used any medication. So I asked, uh, did, did you take any medication? And um, I found uh, any uh, associated symptom, uh, so for example, uh, any fever or numbness or tiredness. So, and uh, and in my case, the patient is the woman. Uh, so, I am. Uh, I need to. Uh, maybe I asked them if they uh, used uh, the um, used the hormones <laughs> like uh, pro like estrogen or progestin on uh, after the history talking and I. I'll go through the examination, uh, and in this examination, uh, in examination, I uh, the first thing is I uh, saw, saw I watched the patient uh, vital sign, and uh, and uh, I examined the uh, the the patient's. Uh, spinal uh, spine, and is and I I want to measure the uh, strengthness or an alignment of the spine. Uh, so um, I am looking for the, the neurologic uh, any uh, no no I am perform the neurologic uh, examination to looking for to some uh, if the patient lost any lose any sensation or change in uh, reflex or uh, flex, reflex uh, or muscle weakness so after that uh, after that i am um, i am in, I need some uh, lab tests, um, for um, for example, uh, the X-rays and uh, or MRI or, or even or CT scans um, to confirm my diagnosis. Uh, um, uh, another important test is uh, the the bone density testing uh, to. So, and um, um, the, after um, after um, I have the lab test results, uh, I could confirm my diagnosis and uh, give the patient a, a good treatment plan. We turn on the micro uh, microphone. With what is your treatment plan? Uh, but, um, uh, in this case, um, uh, in this case, the patient's uh, diagnosis is um, osteoporosis, and so the, the first thing uh, I consider for the patient is the bifosphonate supplement, and. Um, Maybe I um, I give the patient the um, um, the, um, the pain killer if the, if they have to, uh, if they have to, this, a severe pain and uh, and maybe a muscle relaxation or medication may is, I, may what? use. Uh, sorry, uh, Dr. Winter. What kind of painkiller that you going to? What kind of painkiller you going to give her? 
um, um, I consider um, the, um, the end stage. Okay. 70 years old, female, most of them, or some of them will have chronic kidney disease. And if she has CFCK3, what else, what is your options? Uh, um, I, uh, so in, in your, this case, um, I will be the, the Tylenol for the patient. Good. That's, that's a correct answer. Yes. Okay. Um, key point for this case from the class. What medication that you are particularly concerned in this case, if the patient was taking medication and increase her risk of fracture, in this case, osteoporotic fracture, what is the number one medication that you ask for your patients? You know the answer? Um, you know the answer? <laughs> Okay, so every case, every case, I like to give you guys one take home point. Okay. okay if you don't, I will call for a number and to make it more fun number. And, and then you just pick a number. <laughs> okay, I think that number 12. Number 12. Okay, when uh, number 12 is coming, I just tell you about some. It's um, Dr. Mindo had the um, uh, junior club. Huh? We talk about the oestrogen or something like that. If you're interested in it, you may have a look at it in the Facebook. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Number, number 12. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, I, don't, I don't follow his case, so I don't know. I like your honest answer, but next time I like the entire class pay attention to the case because every case I like to show you one take home point. Even after today, all you need to remember 15 points that give you some good checklist for every case. Okay, so let me tell you this uh, for a 70 years old lady present with acute back pain and likely due to autoporotic fracture. Your number one medication you want to rule out is steroid. Was she on chronic steroid or not? Because prednisone or any type of chronic medications such as steroid will increase the likelihood of fracture multiple times. Okay, so class, make sure you ask your patient about medication. Okay, and yes, uh, the treatment for this case by by uh, like yeah, you uh, just mentioned earlier, but the take home point, another point for this one, if you want bonus one is Alantrone, 70 milligram, you take weekly. This is a very, very difficult drug to take. You have to take 30 minutes on an empty stomach, half an hour before your first meal, sit upright like this. Why? Because the absorption rate for Alantrone is only 5%. That means 95% medication you take will go out. So if you take medication and then you eat or you lay down or whatever you do, it won't be effective. Okay, this is a very difficult medication to take, Alandrone, just tell your patient. Okay, so those are two take home points. I like to give you some high key point for each case and remember that because it will make you a really good doctor and you can impress your peers because you can always say, hey, do you know Alandrone is very difficult medication to take, okay? And then you can question your classmate and say, you know why? And you can say, hey, the absorption rate is extremely low. And she, and she will say, really? Wow, you look very smart. And yet you are smart, okay? Okay, move on to the next case, uh, Andin. Okay, I think that's the same, uh, Tao, number 12. Yeah, she can uh, keep uh, her seat.
My ten year a woman, forty year old. Uh, she a runner, and uh, she had a pain in her uh, right knee, and uh, on on the uh, inferior lateral. And she has my tender, and she is work. She has worked in each when she going up and down chair. So about my case, first I uh, I make sure that I. Uh, after I uh, wash my hand and into my into the my cell to patient and uh, get her information about uh, her her name her job and uh, her diabetes. So I make sure that he feel comfortable and to uh, to ask me uh, to make the interview interviews good. So um, first I I um. I asked uh, what bring you here today, and then I uh, I want to I want her to uh, point it. Can I uh, can you show me the localize of your pen and uh, point it? I I want to know exactly localize, and uh, then I asked about where did it is, and uh, and uh, it's hard. Uh, the onset it happened uh, suddenly or gradually, and um, about us. Uh, and next, I will ask about a uh, uh, character about the uh, the uh, uh, can you describe this man for me? And um, and then I I uh, I give her on pen count zero to ten and make sure that she uh, correct is. And uh, then I uh, I asked her the is a uh, reason or the is come and go, and uh, I asked about the trigger, as uh, what is much worse and uh, what is much uh, better, um about the treatment, uh, do you uh, have you knew any treatment before, and uh, do, do you take any medication medication like NSAID, uh. Or uh, anything we do with your pen, uh, do it work? Uh, after that, I asked about a symptom uh, appear associated with a uh, pain like uh, swelling. Uh, do you have swelling any bodies? And uh, about a fever or uh, in your pen, in your knees, uh, your skin, when you touch it, it's warm or not. And after that, I uh, asked about the uh, bad history and uh, have you any uh, medical problem before and to uh, treat it. And uh, then I asked about the uh, family history, uh, about how uh, uh, your member in family gets a um, medical problem like girls or anything else. Uh, about uh, yes, about me and uh, about the social network social <laughs> history. Um, I will ask uh, the union of tobacco, we then go uh, about the uh, exercise uh, re re regularly, and um, then I uh, ask about her job. Uh, when you had been, what time you had it, and. Uh, when you are runner, it make you uh, uh, get up yourself, or you do up yourself. And uh, after I uh, I get uh, that information, so next I will uh, uh, take a physical examination, and uh, I I make sure that she she feel comfortable and. Uh, I first I take the right side and uh, I look and I uh, I had I asked her to uh, stand up and work. I I look her uh, movement and anything like uh, uh, tension, uh, uh, her body is there any care or erythema and is there any part of the body he has swelling and uh, then I uh, I. Uh, I uh, I asked her to lie back, and uh, I must assess the uh, temperature of uh, her knee, and uh, uh, then I uh, met a patient uh, in her uh, joint, 
and uh, she arrived me and then I uh, I uh, I take another side and I compare that is uh, is different and uh, I am I mean so and compare then I had some test uh, that's not I can uh, diagnose um particular type and uh, three step and uh, Finally, I uh, I want to see what test. Uh, Taylor tap. Okay. Uh, knee cap tap and uh, waist tap test. Okay. Yeah. And then I want to see movement of the knee of uh, after and partial knee flexion. And after that, I am. Uh, I I had a di uh, dion diagnosis difference in this kind. Uh, the first about I I dion I diagnosis this kind is new uh, persistent and another different ear. The first ear coro uh palatella of the tiller is minus runner knee. And uh, the second ear, patella tracking, and the third ear, arthritis. And uh, I have some tests, um, a patient test ear, commit blood cow. I'm not sure that he, he, if he has fever, I can get it. And uh, about uh, a patient test ear, I have uh, three, three tests. In the first, it's right upon and uh, a reason that I can uh, I can see uh, about the structure or uh, any uh, positive of bone of me and uh, the second test is a user sound. Uh, I want to uh, uh, visualize traveling in uh, the effective uh, person and uh, and the final test uh, MRI. Yeah. About the treatment, I uh, um. Do you want to do three things? Right, give me one second. You want to do three things at the same time: X-ray, ultrasound, and the MRI. Right? Yeah. Yeah. How much, how much an MRI cost in Vietnam? Uh, maybe, uh, maybe uh, three million. And uh, MRI, MRI is not common, but I, I want to know because she is 40 years old. Okay. Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll get back to that point later. Keep going and finish your presentation. Okay. Uh, about treatment, I will discuss with you uh, because I don't know exactly. <laughs> so uh, if uh, the first I will uh, give her, if he has uh, inflammatory, I will give her antibiotic and uh, uh, relieve uh, her pain. And after that, um, I will give some advice that uh, she uh, she avoid small woman that much uh, her pain worsen. And uh, when she leave, I I advise her you pillars, uh, you up. Uh, under her knee and it's really a swelling in the morning and if uh, if it doesn't work in i uh, i i give some uh, another treatment like surgery <laughs> yeah that, uh. okay thank you so let me go back to the uh, question i like to ask you what the mri finding that would change your treatment plan. Uh, mm. Oh, you want MRI? Okay. If you really want, that's fine. If you want to present by, okay. So my question for you is, what are the findings on the MRI that would change your treatment plan? What would you do? Uh, I don't know the word in uh, English, so. <laughs> I can, yeah, I can say it. I don't know the word, it's right. Okay. So I say Vietnam, Vietnamese. Yes, you, you can say Vietnamese. It's okay. Uh, yeah, em, em muốn sử dụng em right để coi là bệnh nhân có thể là ô thư hay là ô hủy xương gì đó hay không? 
Okay, sure. Okay, let, let me get back to you in one second. Let me ask the class. Class, what is bursitis? What is bursitis? This is this is a classic sport medicine. Okay, you must know this answer because people will present to you a lot, and you should be able to explain to your patient what is bursitis. And then, uh, can you help me just pick in a random number? Um, number nine. Number nine. Again, yeah. she's a very good at, she was good at that last time. <laughs> okay. So pay attention to your classmate when they present because I will ask you a random question and you will remember that. Go ahead. Uh, you mean prosthesis? Yeah, prosthesis. Uh, it's, I think it's a, an inflammation. Bursa. Okay, so what the heck is bursa? Liquid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it uh, contains liquid. Uh, <laughs> Uh, to um, uh, make the chorn uh, smoothly. <laughs> so uh, I think uh, bursa is a uh, a part uh, that uh, protect the the chorn components like uh, the the cartilla, the the chorn fluid. Yeah, we call that bursa, right? Oh, you guys almost there, okay? But think about it, and I challenge each of you go home tonight and try to find the bursa in your joy. So bursa, you can say a very simple way. It's a cushion, okay, in between your joy and that help protect or absorb. So this is very common in people with, they have high activities like this lady, they say she's a runner. So the take home point for this one in class, the history and the social history will tell you a lot because if you don't ask about what she doing for fun and she did not tell you she was a runner, you will go around and you wonder what the heck is that. But if she telling you, hey, I'm a jogger, I'm a runner, I run 12 miles a day. And you, in this case, um, you guys should ask more about how many miles you run a day. And then what happened with this? Because if she was a runner, it's likely she went about five miles, two miles. And one day she decided to increase 10 miles and that will make a difference. And that will say, aha, so you double your exercise. It is likely because of this and it's likely for scientists. And for, for you to take home point, you don't need anything. You don't need x-ray, you don't need ultrasound and definitely no MRI, okay? I mean, somebody will pay that, I don't pay for it. If your patient don't pay for it, you pay for it, okay? So think about it. All the lab tests, it's expensive. Guy, remember this, it's expensive and don't order for fun. Don't order for your curiosity and don't, last thing, okay, don't even order because you don't know what it is. That's the, that's the last thing. You should know what it is before you order a lab test, okay? So that's the take home point about bursitis. Okay, next case, and then. Okay, number 14. Number 14. Number 14. Microphone, wind, microphone. Yes. Um. Hello, doctors. My name is Kim Nong. Um, so my uh, my patient is a eight uh, year old female who presents with six month uh, of knee, uh, ankle, elbow pain, swollen bilateral. Uh, first, I will uh, introduce myself, um, confirm the patient details, and. Uh, 
date of birth, names, uh, and then I make sure the patient is uh, comfortable. Then I will ask the chief complaint and uh, I will um, uh, ask the permission uh, of the um, um, parents. Excellent. Um, Excellent. Love it. Yes. Um, then I will uh, ask uh, where the exact pain. Um, then I will ask uh, when the symptoms start. Um, it is acute or gradual, and uh, it is uh, continuous or it is come and go. Then I will ask about the duration, because if it is um, more than uh, six months, it is uh, less um, less is um, infection. Then I will uh, check the time of the symptoms during the day. Uh, it is uh, early morning stiffness. Uh, stiffness after, after sleep, uh, re take a rest, or after um, activity uh, to uh, distinguish between inflammatory to uh, mechanical. Um, then I will ask the, about the recurrent infection uh, and uh, any medication. Then um, I will ask about um, any uh, um, associated symptoms uh, to uh, classify class, uh, classificate the, um, the type of GIA um, then uh, I will ask um, like fever um, nausea vomiting then I will ask um, about uh, the normal activity or interest has been uh, interrupted and then I will check the function uh, of the patient like uh, school progress and attendance about uh, sleep pattern uh, family relationship and uh, stress uh, experience then I will uh, move to uh, physical uh, examination uh, first I will uh, uh, observe um, any uh, malnutrition um, vital size I will check vital size uh, then I will uh, uh, check the lung, uh, heart, and uh, abdomen. Uh, then I will uh, check the, uh, I will examine on chance about swelling, tenderness, um, the range of uh, movement and deformities, uh, because uh, some, some chance that is, uh, don't have uh, any symptoms, uh, but it, um, they are inflammatory. Um, then I will, uh, is a mind for any systemic disease um, with um, articular or um, components or extra articular of both like nails, eyes, um, uh, skin, um, and uh, lymph nodes. Um, then I will uh, measure the leg strength. Um, some, uh, some. Uh, uh, for um, because the function of the patient, if uh, it is uh, don't, uh, it is not uh, equal between the two legs. Okay. Uh, that, then what would telling you? Yeah. What yeah. would tell you if the the patient two leg is not equal? Uh, uh, I think that is uh, affect uh, the patient life and uh, because the treatment is improve uh, the quality life because it is an uh, autoimmune uh, disease. Okay, we'll, we'll get back to that point. Remember that. Okay, keep going. Uh, then I will uh, move to uh, laboratory test uh, because uh, there is no uh, accurately uh, Mm, diagn um, test to accurate uh, the diagnosis. Uh, so I will uh, throw the um, blood sedimentary rate and CRP uh, to uh, um, in indicate any inflammatory, but it is not uh, specific to uh, uh, GAA. Um, then I will uh, uh, give some uh, uh, rheumatoid factors and ANA test. Um, it is um, only a small percentage of uh, P 
TIA, but the level of uh, rheumatoid factors is um, indicate um, the aggressive um, aggressive uh, progress or poor prognosis. Um, then um, I will uh, give her give her X-ray. Um, to uh, identify any erosion or uh, trauma space. Um, and uh, based on this patient, I think um, she is has um, polyarticular GIA uh, because uh, more than uh, six joints. Um, and then I will uh, give her the treatment. First of all, I will uh, encourage and uh, support explain to the parents uh, and then I will encourage and uh, support um, the management approach um, based on uh, the inv individual needs. Um, then I will uh, uh, give her some, uh, uh, encourage her uh, practice physical examination, uh, physical uh, activity uh, such as um, swimming. Uh, swimming uh, is very good uh, for GIA patient. Uh, then I will uh, relieve relieve pain and uh, control inflammatory um, by uh, COX-2 inhibitor and uh, NSAID. NSAID. Yes, that's all. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, actually, this is, this is a very good point for the entire class. So let me ask you in the class, if you have just one test or one thing you ask the patient to do, what would you do? And this is so important for kids. Uh, in this particular, particular case, what would you do? What, that's one test or one thing that you will ask the kid to do that will tell you a lot of information. Uh, if I have uh, just take one test uh, for yeah. her, I will uh, give her the um, complete blood count. Complete. Uh, okay, hang in there. Okay, if the moment you say that, I, I will get back to you. Class, um, when I say one test, you can do anything. Physical exam, lab test, or blood test, or whatever. What would one thing you, can, you would do in this kit? Because that would tell you a lot about the patient condition. Or may I call one patient, one, one student? Yes. Yeah. 15. 15. And by the way, Ngang, while we're waiting for that, I like your uh, pronunciation. Speak loud and clear. This is really good. Okay. And I'll get back to you on one point. Okay. Let me uh, wait for this. <laughs> Hello, um, it's Dạng Thứ Minh. I will order um, blood test. Okay. Okay, guys, so let me give you a hint. I, I try to tell you history and exam are very important. And for kids like this, one thing, make sure you do is you ask the kid walk with you. You need to observe the gait of the patient. If the kid can walk, that will tell you a lot. If the kid cannot walk, it will tell you the future, the prognosis. Try to avoid tests, okay? Try to avoid a lab test or imaging or whatever. Basic things are basic. I'm telling you, when a patient, especially a kid, they come to see you, if they go around, they play around a lot, that tell you a lot. If the kid is just sit there because of knee pain or whatever pain that bothers her, and if you ask her to walk with you, and the patient could not walk, I will tell you that's very painful. So gait assessment, again, guys, in this module, in this lecture, gait assessment is so important. You ask the patient, stand up and walk with you. It takes less than 30 seconds. We will tell you a lot. In my practice, a lot of patients come and sit down. I ask them to stand up and walk with me just to the door and then get back. I will tell the patient a lot about that condition, back pain, low back pain, leg pain, whatever pain. Think about it, okay? So class, remember, ask the patient or walk the patient with you, okay? Cool, and then uh, go back to um, one key thing about the, um, the leg, longer and shorter. This is a bonus question. 
if one leg is longer, which one is abnormal, which one is not normal? Which one is normal, which one is abnormal in a kid in a GAIA? You know? <laughs> Let me ask, yes, go ahead. Uh, if uh, if uh, one, one leg is longer than the other, I will uh, do the limit, uh, check the limited, um, the range of uh, movement, like a chidel and bush. Mm. I, I like it, but let me tell you, if the left one is longer than the right one, which one is normal? Uh, I will, uh, I will uh, uh, check uh, is there any tenderness, swollen. Okay, if I don't let you touch the patient, you just watch, well, look at the patient. Like Dr. Dean right now, you are Dr. Longo, and Dr. Dean show you two legs. And then let's assume he's eight years old, okay? I don't know how, how, how old he is now, but he's eight years old. The left one is longer than Which one is normal? Uh, I think the the longer is normal. The longer is normal. The answer is incorrect. The normal one and the shorter one. Okay, guys, remember, and I'll tell you why. In kids, when they have inflammation, in this case, JIA, we call it idiopathic juvenile arthritis, the inflammation cause stimulate the college grow faster than normal in the physic and the every physic remember the bone anatomy so the every physic process is a product growth and because of inflammation that's a lot of growth factor in fact the longer one was the abnormal one okay i hope you remember from today lecture and this is the key point about jia okay so walk the patient observe you can tell a lot and the parents will amaze, say, oh, Dr. Ngung, you are awesome. You can just look at my kid without even touch. You can tell the diagnosis, okay? And that's how I enjoy medicine because a lot of time I teach my students, just observe the patient. Just look at how they talk, how, how their face, their skin can tell you a lot. Their eye can tell you a lot. When they walk, you can tell a lot too, okay? Next case. So that's the take-home message for you. Gate. Okay, walk with the patient. Yes, do you have a question? Uh, uh, I, I know my uh, answer is wrong, but uh, can I give an explanation for I, why yes. I choose blood test? Because I want to rule out um, the septic arthritis. Good, good. I like it. And I, yes. with that. I agree with that. Yeah. And you're right. If, if, if you can touch the patient, yes, obviously yeah. the tender one will be the abnormal one. So you will know the longer one will be half normal. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Keep going. Next case. Number four. I hope you still awake, and I'd like to make this class even even more joyful. Okay. So as we move on, I will ask you more tricky question. I give you pearls. That's like I say. This, uh, those are are keys in uh, clinical practice. Go ahead. Yes, uh, my case is uh, the patient is uh, 28 years old female. Uh, she has a uh, quotidian fever for two weeks and uh, salmon rust on the back on, uh, and uh, diffusion pain hand and uh, wrist. I, um, I see uh, the diagnosis uh, I don't on chest disease. So um, the first, I um, I will introduce myself and I check some information uh, about the patient and uh, I ask uh, about the John Ben. I just say uh, when did uh, you start? How long did you last? Um, when is young John Ben most severe in the morning or evening or after exercise? And uh, what type of pain do you experience? Is it uh, non or intense or localized or general? Um, which joints are affected? The neck, back, arms, wrist, fingers, shoulders, hips, knees, and feet. Um, are young joints squalling, inflamed, or warm? And um, does the pain occur on both sides of the body or just one? And how severe is the pain? From to 
from zero to ten, and um, how do you reply young men, and um, what thing makes you young men worse? And uh, besides, you uh, you have a German rust uh, and fever. So I will ask about uh, the rust and fever. And uh, are there any problems with John Ben? And um, uh, besides, uh, at times, do you feel like your body has stiffened? And uh, how far can you work before hurting or getting tired? Can you clean stairs? And um, do your symptoms affect your ability to anger? engage in uh, normal activity, activity, activities or sports or to exercise. Um, past medical history, I uh, asked about um, did you use any medications? Uh, what about uh, rheumatolo rheum rheumatological disease? Autoimmune, autoimmune conditions and allergies and um, family I asked about uh, rheumatological disease and autoimmune disease and uh, social history I asked about uh, smoking alcohol what level of care do you receive and uh, can you manage chef food shopping and um, when I uh, when I do physical examining I uh, I checked the uh, John fire. I checked the uh, hands, upper limbs, lower limbs. I uh, I want to find uh, square implant, redness and warmth. And I set the uh, movitation and checked the uh, reflex and uh, muscle and and muscle strength. And I and I set the uh, deformity and uh, rheumatoid nodules and I check extra articular manifestations such as um, cutaneous, cardiac, pulmonary, renal, gastrointestinal, spleen, lymph, vascular, hematological, neurologic and uh, ocular and um, I, uh, I make uh, investigations to uh, diagnostics such as uh, AAF, INI, NTCCB, and uh, test to uh, check inflammation such as uh, CAB, VS, white blood, white blood count, and uh, blood control. And um, I check uh, John's chest, John's is right, and uh, John fluid evaluation and uh, even uh, I check uh, skin biopsy and uh, liver function and um, in this case I, uh, I give uh, different diagnosis just a um, rheumatoid arthritis and uh, systemic lupus erythematosus and um, I uh, treatment I use drug to reduce pain, such as a uh, NSAID and uh, or steroid, and uh, use a uh, methotrexate and uh, biologic uh, response modifiers. And uh, I also give ways to make most of uh, young health. Um, I. Uh, I give some information uh, young medical, young medicine, and uh, supplement young diet and keep moving. And that's all. All right. So, if I was a patient and you tell me I am having adult onset new disease, whatever the name is that, so I will ask you what the heck is that? What exactly, what condition I have? How would you say that? Um, I think uh, the CDC is um, 
is a uh, is has uh, has some symptom. I uh, I need to uh, I need to investigation to different about uh, to different from uh, chromatic and uh, arthritis. Uh, I think uh, this is um, that's a no to accept. You mean the diagnosis of exclusions, right? Yes. Rule out all the disease before this is the final diagnosis. I'm okay with that. But my question for you and the entire class is, or well, first of all, class, you may not ever see this class or disease. Uh, you may not ever see this disease in Vietnam. So you just learn this from the book, and because you never see it, it's it's okay. I can't unfair for you. But um, why I bring this disease to this class? Because I like to tell you, if you ever see international patient, particularly a patient with Mediterranean um, ancestor, or they coming from Eastern European, and they present with this, and when you make or you evaluate for all the causes already, infection, whatever cause, and everything come back negative, then you can think about this is, could be this. And uh, for your question, how would you explain this to a patient? This is even us uh, here in the US, uh, we explain to the patient and they still don't understand what the heck is going on. So I, it's to me, it's, it's very difficult because why they have skin rash, why they have fever, they have joint pain, all kind of things. And the way that I say, you have, uh, you know, there's a, a thermostat in your house. And in this case, your thermostat, like our body, we have similar thing like that. And in this case, the, the thermostat was reset and that's why you have fever every day. That's why we call postidian, I mean fever at a particular time during the day. So um, I, I just want to give you, a, in this case, it's a taste of a rheumatic disease. I don't kind of ex expect you to know a lot about this one, but I think you present this nicely here. But let me ask you this. If you have a patient with fever, rash, and joy, can the patient have other causes? Or is it, what are the most common things you would look for before you say this adult onset disease? Well, first of all, uh, let, let, let me make the question easier. How many of you know what is salmon rash? What, what exactly is salmon rash? You know, you see it a lot on textbook, what it is. <laughs> all right, if you don't know it, you Google it and you will see it, okay? I like you to remember from this. It's quite different rash. That's what we call salmon rash because, yeah, it look, the color look like salmon. I mean, the food is awesome, okay? I love salmon. But every time it's salmon, I think about the disease. That's how it's kind of interesting, but because I love salmon. So. Okay, so look at that and, and, and you know it. All right, let's move on to the next case. And uh, we, how many cases more, uh, Dr. Lin? Um, we have seven left, but I oh think God. that we, 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 we should take a break now. Okay, just okay. five minutes again. And guys, before the break, let me suggest you something that we can make it faster next time. I'd like you to eliminate or omit the term, I will. For example, this is how I would present, and I will make it simple for you to mention it very quick. My case is about 32 years old lady with monoarticular arthritis. In the history, I would ask about this and keep going, and you don't have to repeat again. I will, I will, no, no, just focus on history, smoking history, alcohol, social, marriage, single, in a, in a relationship or not. Moving on to a physical exam, I was looking for heart, this and this and this, go on, and I would consider this particular lab test A, B, C, and Ds. Put together, this is my differential diagnosis, one, two, three, four, five. The most likely diagnosis is septic arthritis. 
And my treatment plan is antibiotic. Okay, so tell you that's how you present a case, and uh, and of course you'll get to that point. But focus and go along. Okay, take a five minute break, and I will come back.
Okay, class, let's go ahead and start it. Hello. Um, so we have seven Ks. I like the last seven Ks would go a little bit faster. I've set a limit for five minutes each case. Like you see that if I can present a case within three minutes, you can do a five minutes. Mm -hmm. Focus on the history, why the symptom is. And like I say earlier, this is the case in my history, I would ask and you go this, 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 in my examination, I would do this and this. The, those are the lab I would consider. This is my differential diagnosis. And in conclusion, the most likely diagnosis is. Okay, uh, and then uh, let's go okay. ahead. I think uh, number eight, number eight. Number eight Yes. Hello, doctor. Uh, my name is Naman, and uh, my case is about a 70 years old man uh, prostate, uh, with the prostate cancer after radiotherapy and uh, transurethral um, uh, resection of uh, the prostate. And uh, <clears throat> he has the two days lower pen and uh, no fecal and uh, urinary incontinence uh, <clears throat> okay about uh, first I will um, uh, prepare and uh, wash my hand and uh, introduce about myself to the patients and uh, asking about uh, his detailed information and then I will um, ask for the permission to check his medical uh, history and um, do some physical examination First, uh, I want to ask about um, the, the chief complaint. Uh, in this case, is about the lower back pain. So I will ask about the onset and uh, the duration of the pain, asking, um, asking him to describe for me uh, how the pain like and uh, uh, ask, uh, do the, um, how the severity of the pain and does it uh, spread or go anywhere or just stay and uh, some uh, associate, associated thing come with the pain uh, for example uh, fever or um, uh, fever or um, maybe uh, the problem with um, problem with the uh, uh, passing urine or uh, pass uh, the fecal and uh, <clears throat> about the past history information, I will <clears throat> ask about the um, systemic disease, uh, for example, the, car, uh, the the heart disease, the lung disease, uh, if he has any uh, diabetes, and about the the, the medication that he is is uh, using, about the, any treatment before and. Uh, I, uh, especially any uh, diagnosis before and asking more about alcohol, about uh, uh, cigarette uh, smoking and uh, asking about the family uh, history if anyone has the same uh, like him and after asking uh, some information I will do the uh, physical examination and uh, first uh, I will check the vital side and uh, then mm, going to um, the heart, the cardiovascular system, about the, the lung, about the abdomen, and uh, especially the, the pelvic uh, area, because he, ha uh, he has the lower pec pain. So we will um, ask uh, for the pain and uh, on page uh, any uh, pain area to find out any um, masses or any um, uh, any problem. Uh, after that, I will um, su suggest uh, some basic uh, lab tests for, for him. Uh, in this case, I will um, give uh, first the full blood count to see uh, the uh, leuco leukocyte, uh, ery erythrocytes, or um, maybe the platelet. And uh, and this, the next thing uh, 
I want to give this about um, uh, the uh, on, on, on the south of the uh, ladder and uh, the on the south of the cross state and um, if uh, there's uh, any uh, any uh, other problem, I will um, um, suggest uh, more lab, lab tests for him. And uh, about the um, diagnosis, I will uh, think and give some different di diagnosis for the first is about um, the benign prostatic hyperplasia. And uh, the second one, I uh, think is about um, urinary tract infection, and uh, the next is uh, urethrocanculite, and uh, maybe uh, the chronic prostatitis, and uh, the last one I think is a uh, prostate cancer. Yeah, that is on uh, about um, my case. Very good. I, I like the way that you put things in uh, class. This is how when you present, uh, try to put in a more focused history and go stepwise. Okay, so what, so my question for you and usually is, if this is a patient with uh, prostate cancer and present with back pain, what is your number one concern? Uh, the number one concern about the prostate cancer is, um, if uh, about the I can say about the, the the stage of the cancer, I mean if he's um, he's he's find out that's cancer early or maybe uh, too late uh, because um, the cancer can um, metastasize to uh, any uh, organ and uh, can be uh, more severe. Okay, now um, class at uh, second point. For this one. If you have a patient like this, you like to make sure that uh, there's no bony metastasis in this case uh, to um, patient. For example, a lot of people, even though they receive treatment for cancer, but they may have bony metastasis. And this is probably one of the earliest signs that you may find in a patient with prostate cancer. Okay, uh, so that take home message for prostate cancer, back pain. Okay, all right. Thank you. Move on to the next one. Okay, number six. Okay, number six. All right. My name is Nam. If a patient comes to me, uh, the first thing I would like to do is to introduce myself and then confirm the patient's details. After that, I will ask for permission and um, uh, about uh, uh, taking medical history and perform examination and make sure that uh, she, uh, she feels comfortable to continue our conversation. Uh, my case is um, a 67 years old female with sandwich three months knee pain, bilateral, and swollen on the right, no fever, and, uh, and red bitters on the exam. Uh, first, I will ask uh, about the location. Um, uh, where, uh, what's wrong? Uh, I will ask about uh, her sick, her sick complaint. What brought you here today? Where is your knee pain? Is it on the one side or on the fourth side? Uh, how long have you had it? Uh, is, is it sudden or gradual? Uh, could you describe me more about your knee pain? Um, are they stiffed in the morning and how long they last um, if they appear? Uh, what accompany with your knee pain? Do you have any pain in other joints? 
what make um what do you do to relieve your pain? Do you use any medication for this? Uh, and does it help? Uh, it, did you have any job? Did you have any injury in your pain before? Uh, do you have any significant disease? Do you have any allergy disease? Uh, does any members in your family have a similar pain like you? In uh, uh, that's on my questions about uh, the medical history. Then I will uh, do physical examination on uh, this patient. Um, first, I will take a general uh, observation of the patient appearance to see that uh, there are any abnormal like an, uh, the size of infection or anemia. Uh, and then I will take uh, her vital sign. After that, I will uh, check for her uh, cardiovascular system, uh, respiratory system, and uh, GI tract, and uh, and go to the knee. I uh, first I will take a general observation of the knee. Uh, there are any swollen or or, or erythema. Uh, is um and then I will uh, I will touch by my hand to see that uh, are there any um high temperature on that and um, after that I will take um take the rain um take the the rain of the motion of the the pen and um and John John breaking uh. To see, uh, to see any abnormal in the the joint, uh, the knee joint, and um, but particular stuff to see any fluid uh, on the knee joint, um, because uh, she have uh, she have a um, a swollen and warm joints, um, the <laughs> she has. Uh, pain in uh, in uh, both uh, knee pain. She had pain in in both knee, but uh, swollen in uh, one side. It is on the right side. So I uh, and this uh, morning stiffness. I think uh, this a um, uh, referred uh, is stress to that um, uh, osteoarthritis and. Um, the differential diagnosis of this is rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, to uh, clarify my diagnosis, uh, I will um, I will be have uh, some tests uh, such as uh, X-ray. I think uh, it's a um, it's a uh, sensitivity to see any abnormal in her her. A knee joint. Um, to see that uh, are, are there any joint space narrowing uh, osteo osteophyte uh, formation? Is uh, a, a subjective of uh, osteoarthritis it, because it, uh, this is a, a, a woman with uh, twenty with sixty seven years old. Um, so let me ask a um, last question before the question. Let's say you see this patient a lot in Vietnam. You know, the number one thing for OA in the US is overweight. I mean, American, they eat Burger King, McDonald's, everything big, so they're big, and obviously they have pain. In Vietnam, I mean, I don't see many people overweight, and they still have OA. So what would you recommend them um, to relieve that pain? What the single one medication that you would like to give a patient with OA in Vietnam? Go ahead. Um, I uh, I will um, I will uh, advise them uh, to uh, do more physical activity. Okay. 
And what else? What type of um, uh, Can you repeat? I don't. I... What type of physical activity? What kind of thing that you would do? I think uh, because it's a, um, a, a young uh, old woman and um, have a. Uh, I will recommend her to work, work more. At, uh, walking. Yes, yes, walking. Now, this is your grandma. This is, you will see a lot in Vietnam. Your grandma, your grandfather, they come with knee pain. And uh, they will ask for your advice. And because they're in pain, they don't want to walk. They just want to stay at home. So your advice as a future doctor, grandma, you need to walk more. And how? I mean, they say, I'm in pain. Give her paracetamol. Okay? And when her pain is better, she can walk. And when, in fact, when she walks, it stimulates the college, more blood go to that joint. So hopefully the progression will be slower. So take home call for you guys with osteoarthritis. I mean, I will spend some time in the future talk about this lecture because it's so much fighting just recently. But for you guys, add exercise and, and lifestyle will make a big change in osteoarthritis. Okay? Good case. Now, move on to the next one. Okay, number three. Number three. All right. Yeah. Hello, doctors. My name is Thien. And my case is about 62 years old male, congestive heart failure, stage 2, uh, New York class. Myotonic dystrophy, type 2, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, admitted to hospital due to congestive heart failure, exacerbation, chief complaint of severe metastatal phalangeal pain, and swollen two, two days after admission. Yeah. And uh, the first I will wash my hand, introduce my situation, I confirm the patient information. And then I, uh, I, I, I asked for permission to ask history and examination, ensure the patient is comfortable to uh, continue. In the history, I asked for, um, as for the, 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 the pen. I asked for the, uh, the location, the onset. Is it um, rapid or radio? And I asked for the, the, the pen scale. Mm. I asked for the treatment before the, the, rub, the, the medication the patient has used. I asked for associated symptoms such as joy sickness. I also asked uh, how many, how many choice affected. Continue to the past medical history, I will ask for some, some uh, medication that can introduce the situation of patients such as diuretics, ask for similar episodes and the tumor. I ask for family history of gout and in the social history, I asked for consumption of meat, seafood, alcohol. Um, in uh, continue to the physical examination, I will check vital sign. I will systemically exam, especially concentrate on uh, examining the joint, especially metatarsal phalangeal joint for and other joints for swelling, warmth, redness, tenderness, and range of movement. And I also um, fight for trophy knot in the joint and in the helix of ear. My, um, my, my diagnosis and defense, differential diagnosis is uh, gout. Beside that, 
I have some differential diagnosis is pseudo gout, septic arthritis, or uh, trauma. I suggest some blood test. Uh, the first is uric acid level in the blood. The next is x ray of affected joint and on the sound may be uh, connected. But I think uh, the gold standard is the uh, middle aspiration. Yeah, but in this case, I, I, I need, uh, I, I think it's not necessary because it is uh, on, uh, it's the, uh, make the patient will uh, be more pain, yeah, more painful. Well, and in this case, yeah. Mm -hmm. So let, mm -hmm. let me ask you this, why do you think the patient have gout? Yeah, because um, the gout, the brow gout is the first um, diagnosis coming to my mind because uh, it's a it's specific position is in metal touch of phalangeal. Yeah, with uh, the acute acute um, acute onset with the severe severe a uh, 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 severe bend with swollen after a mission because in this patient with the congestion of failure maybe he he is um, he yield that diuretics for treatment and uh, using diuretics he owns, um, is an um, risk factors for gout okay so why using diuretic make people have gout why yeah um in in in, in my opinion i think uh, when you, we use the diuretic, we will make the uric acid level is a higher. And can we it's make uh, the the deposit the the, the rushes to uh, deposit of, of uric acid is uh, faster in the joint. You're right. It's an excellent point. But um, to make this simple analysis, so in gout patient, uric acid level already there is high or is normal. However, when you give patient with diuretic, you take out water. So think about chemistry back in high school or even middle school, not need to be in medical school. The concentration level of uric acid will raise because water going down. Does that make sense? If the concentration of uric acid increase, the macrophage and neutrophil, then we detect that and then we attack and that's called gout. So the take home message for this case class, people have history of gout and they have heart attack or heart failure or anything that need diuretics, I'll tell you very most likely they will have gout attack in the hospital. So be aware and be ready. Okay, so next case. Good job. Okay, number nine. I like it. We're moving forward and then you guys become more focused. Maybe because you guys become more fatigued too. Okay, go ahead. You have five minutes. Uh, uh, my case is a 31 year old man present with four days back pain and happened while he was uh, moving his furniture. He tried APAB without relief. So uh, I uh, will introduce myself and explain why I'm here. After that, I will confirm his uh, personal information. Uh, then I will ask him uh, where's the pain and uh, what uh, were you doing when you had the pain and uh, uh, is it certain or gradual and uh, is, it, uh, is the pain in one spot or spread to another? And um, does it uh, come and go or is it still exist? Mm -hmm. And uh, how long have you had the pain? And um, how the pain feels like and on the rate from uh, 0 to 10, how do you score it? And uh, does anything come with the pain? And, uh, can you move or stand up straight? And uh, anything make the pain uh, become uh, better or worse? And uh, how you had the uh, the pain, similar pain before. And uh, what did you do to uh, relieve your pain? Uh, 
Then I also asked about, um, did you change your bowel habit? And uh, I also asked about the job. What is his job? And did he usually to uh, lift the heavy objects? And um, I, this he uh, usually to doing exercise or just uh, sit a lot. And then uh, I asked about the allergies and, uh, and smoke, smoking and drinking alcohol. Uh, then I uh, asked about the family history. Is there any uh, uh, member in his family have the similar symptom like him? Yes. And uh, about the patient examination, uh, I will. Uh, First of all, I will take the vital side, then I will check his weight and, and height, and then uh, I will uh, uh, notice on the posture, the gait, and uh, any swelling or scar on the back, on the back, and uh, focus on the kyphosis or scoliosis. Then I will palpate directly on the spine and uh, paraspinal, uh, to check the muscle and then I will do some tests uh, include the uh, motion, the range of uh, the spine movement uh, the yeah, bending uh, bend, bend forward backward or uh, turn right left or uh, twist and then I do some tests uh, uh, like the uh, straight uh, left racing test and cross stride racing, uh, leg, uh, racing test. After that, I will check more about the uh, abdominal uh, and uh, the heart and the lung. Uh, my uh, diagnosis, uh, my first diagnosis is uh, this herniation. And then I also take to a uh, low back pain. Mm -hmm. and I also take to maybe a uh, kidney disease like infection or kidney stone. So I will do some tests, lab tests, include um, the uh, X-ray uh, test to uh, draw out uh, any uh, make the, uh, uh, make the uh, tumors or any um, Sorry, my uh, lumbar and uh, yeah. All right, you mentioned about X-ray of the lumbar, and, and what are you looking for? Uh, I look for the uh, the bone spur or uh, the uh, narrowing narrowing of the uh, this space uh, to rule out the uh, get osteoarthritis. But he is just uh, 31 years old, so I don't think much about this uh, diagnosis. And okay. I think more about the uh, hernia, herniation. So I will take the. Yeah. Can you see herniation disc on the x rays? No, I, I, I will take the MRI test. Right. So who will pay the MRI? What, what? <laughs> okay, so you, you guys love expensive tests. Okay, so um, let, let me get back to you uh, this one point. Um, this is a, a simple, we call mechanical lower back pain. Okay, so all you need to do is just rest, give him NSAIDs and physical therapy, ask him to go back, do an exercise as slowly as he could. And that's it. You don't need any x-ray. You don't need anything else. You just simple back pain. Okay, history will tell you because he will moving heavy stuff and that's why he had back pain. It could be a tenderness on his back, or it could be strain, it could be herniation of the disc, but any of those, but the, uh, a lot of time the American College of Physicians recommend conservative treatment for at least for a couple months. And if they're not improving, then will you do x-ray and you do all the things. Unless the patient had symptomatic problems, such as fever, um, have, Unural fecal incontinence or other concern. Okay, so this is usually a lot in Vietnam, guy. For you, 
some of you students have back pain already. Why? Because you either carrying heavy stuff, moving house. I mean, remember that one time, right? You have back pain. And then next day, your back pain improve, and then next week it's gone. You don't even remember you have back pain. So back pain, very common. Make sure you know the common back pain and know how to treat it. Okay? So um, any question for you? It sounds like you have a question. Uh, but I think uh, we need to explore uh, to run out any uh, uh, disease like uh, the this herniation first. Uh, That's because right. Because I think However, and let me tell you, because you asked this question, if I do any MRI of this class, 20% of you will have abnormal findings. That means people have abnormal findings on the image, but no symptoms. So remember that. That means you don't need to treat this class. If I take all of you here, 15, that's one out of two, or maybe two of you will have abnormal finding. You may have herniated this. And would I do anything? Well, unlikely. So again, take a message today, guy. Don't do a lot of lab tests or exam, especially MRI. I'll tell you, because you're a student, you love MRI. If you're a doctor, a specialist patient, you hate MRI because it's way too expensive. And someone will pay for it. And that certainly will not be you, okay? So because you, don't, you are the test, you think about it. But think about it. Test, expensive, okay? All right, moving on, Dr. Din. Okay. 11. Do you have two more cases, right? Or three more cases? Uh, three, yeah. Include this one? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so my case is about a 22 years old male with dentic with back pain for six months and um, morning stiffness uh, and a decrease of uh, range of motion. Uh, first, I introduce myself, wash hand, and ask the patient for his consent and um, a medical checkup. Uh, the first question is the onset of the pain. Um, when and how long the pain happened. Um, the characteristic of the pain is remain stable, rising up or coming out by an um, episode. Um, and I will uh, detect that the pain is happened in just one spot, one choice or multiple choice. Um, the trigger of the pain, that's the four pain and um, Next, I will ask about the associated symptom coming with uh, the common ones as usually the stiffness and the decrease in the range of motion. Mm. And I will ask the, the factor that makes um, the pain increase or, um, or release. Especially, I would ask the patient that uh, the pain is the band changing in physical activity or in rest? As um, uh, about his history taking um, the past history, um, the important thing I think I was ask is about his family. Is there anyone in his family has the same condition like him? And um, his uh, traumatic history. Um, uh, this he is take uh, any medication or uh, treatment for six months ago until now. Um, Move to um, physical examination. First, I would take the patient by the side, and next, I look his uh, his appearance, his posture, his gait, how he stand and how he work. Um, I look his uh, skin, snail, eyes because they are necessary for my uh, differential diagnosis. And next, I will focus on the choice. Uh, the, on the choice, the patient tell me uh, was effective. I will check it up with um, 
a pay for pen, swelling, look for shape and me measure their random motion, their stiffness. And especially, I think I have to perform a score test to identify this disease. Next, uh, irim sa into sai sedimentation rate for inflammatory uh, for inflammation. Um, XLAP27 biomarkers, um, lumbar X ray, and maybe later MRI if it is necessary. All right, MRI again. Um, no, no, no. It is necessary. Okay, I guess you yes. Are, uh, university is very um, rich. You guys all the MI all the time. I mean, it's uh, okay. So it's, okay, um, and I will come up with three diagnoses. I, I think I have to include first is the ankylosing spondylitis. The second is um, uh, psoriasis arthritis. And the, the third is um, uh, a lumbar trauma, like um, herniatus, this or bone fracture. Yes. Okay. Excellent. I, I like this. Uh, and again, um, guys, sometimes MRI is indicated. Okay to order MRI. However, uh, in cases like I told you earlier, you may not uh, order it. You may not order MRI if there was not indication. All right. Um, so the take home point for this case is quite simple. For a young guy, it's very unusual for to someone have back pain with morning stiffness. Okay. So those are keywords because why? If ankylosing spondylitis over time, what happens is it will become bamboo spine. You know this on the x ray. So you, you may find it. And yes, the patient may need MRI to see whether any core injury or any, you'd like to see the extended of the edema of the core if needed. All right, thank you, good job. Next one. Okay, uh, yes. 13. <laughs> Number 13. Hello, my name is Chi. Uh, my key is about 70 years old was from shoulder pain by later of prime modern life. This way when the pa this way when the patient uh, rotates internals or externals and abduction. At Dachshund A in stand. At first, I would wash my hand and introduce myself to the patient and confirm the patient details. After that, I will ask the patient for permission to ask her ask him some question. Um, I will ask the reason why the patient came to the hospital today. And after that, I will you out her to explore the characteristic of the main symptoms by the following questions. How long have you had your shoulder pains? What were you doing when your pains come? What the moment in the do you uh, usually get pain? Is your pain continuous or intermission? Your pain, uh, if your shoulder's pain completely disappear, if the patient say yes, I will ask well how long the is left. Uh, I will ask the patient if uh, his pain at the same level uh, between right and left. And um, when the patient gets and now, uh, shoulder pain, how the is feel? I want to ask about associated symptoms 
Uh, so today, um, uh, we do the strain of muscles, yes. And uh, after that, we ask about the stretch uh, Do the patient do any medication or any method to relieve the uh, short pains? Yes, and uh, turn to past medical history, and we ask about the disease the patient gets especially not on diabetes or hypertension because he is a 70 CL and we ask about the activities of the patient uh, and we ask about the uh, injuries, especially injuries in the shoulder in turn to, to family's medical history and we ask about some significant disease yes after that, I will turn to physical examinations. The first, I will uh, take a general exam to the patient to so know about the skin the, uh, or any significant symptoms. Uh, I will check the vital side of the patient. I will check the vital side of the patient and I especially note like, on the blood of pressure. Um, I will. Uh, uh, take the examination on the part, on the system of the body from blood, uh, uh, regulatory system, cardiovascular uh, system, ZSD drug, uh, about muscle cardiovascular system, about shoulder exam. Uh, and uh, also class yeah. two. Would you ask the patient if this is a female one, okay, this is a male one, or would you ask the patient undress their shirt for you to examine the shoulder? Yes. And why? If um, the patient is a female, I, yes, I think um, I need to uh, ask her to take off uh, his uh, shirt because I need to observe the symmetrical between two shoulder but before do this, doing this, I will uh, need a, a, a um, female uh, doctor or a female now will come with me. Okay, keep going. I'll get to that point because that's a very important actual exam. Okay, keep going and finish. Yes, about uh, muscle cardiac system, uh, I thought I will inspect, inspect the in, 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 I will take impressions of the two shoulder uh, about swelling or uh, erythema, uh, about uh, deformity, about skin trends. And we point page to feel the test, feelings, uh, the bone length, mark, and trauma, and uh, soft tissue of the shoulder. I will compare the symmetries between two shoulders. Uh, after that, I will take the range of motion about active range of motion, flexion and extension, external and internal rotation, duction and extraction. I will compare the range of motion between two shoulders. Yes, and uh, after that, I will uh, take some special steps. In this case, I will uh, conduct uh, application test, drop arm step, and uh, acromegalopicular step. Uh, after finish physical examination, I will, will um, turn to laboratory step. Uh, yes, um, I will divide into two of a laboratory test, a rope for diagnostics and a rope for supporting of treatment. Yes, uh, the rope for diagnostics, I suggest it's free. Um, I want to find the picture of calcination or evolution of bone. Um, if I uh, um, can, I'm sorry, I forget to give the uh, uh, differential diagnostics. I think in this case, here once up, uh, uh, I will be a uh, different diagnostics, a rotator cuff syndrome. And if I can distinguish the um, um, main diagnostics, uh, the main diagnostics, the odd 
CEO at Freedix and the different diagnostics, e differential diagnostics, e, um, um, is rotator cuff syndrome. I will um, suggest the patient check MRI after taking uh, x ray. And uh, the second group to support the uh, um, treatment as a dress, uh, we should check blood state, uh, ECG, blue code, and uh, some tests about function of uh, remote and uh, liver. That's all. Okay. Very good one. Thank you. Okay. So let me ask you and the class one question before we move to the next one. Is, you said that you would undress a female patient presenting with shoulder pain. How would you explain to her? Uh, like why you need to undress her? Uh, yes. Um, I think um, before I, uh, um, I take an explanation to the patient, I will ask on all the, uh, the other female doctor or on all the female nurse to come with me to a private room. Yes. And I will explain to the patient, um, I would like to observe your nerve. Uh, I'm sorry, I would like to observe your, uh, your shoulder uh, to uh, give an um, exact diagnosis. And this is my work, this is my work, this is my career, and I don't have any other purpose. Let's believe me. <laughs> All right. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's okay, I understand. So take home point guys, uh, I know this is a habit, even with my resident in the US, they hesitate to ask a female, take out their shirt to looking for a shoulder. But this is so important because if you don't see a symmetric shoulder, and if there's atrophic muscle, there's a lot of disease going on there. Uh, so be careful, but ask the patient politely and he or likely she will say yes. And a lot of times um, you, you will find it just by observing the shoulder, you learn a lot. And shoulder is one of the most difficult, believe it or not, that many resident or medical students, they don't feel comfortable with when they exam because they think there's a lot going on there. In fact, there's only four muscles that rotate, rotate the cup. So uh, it actually is not that difficult, guys. So remember, shoulder, think about it. It's not that complex, okay? And make sure you fully observe the shoulder. All right, next case, also the last case, right? Okay, keep going. I know uh, she know she know about that, okay? Uh, number 15. Yes, my name is Karin. My case is... Um, okay, keep going. Uh, my case is a uh, 51 years old male uh, with his history of chronic psoriasis um, presented with a uh, two months history of knee pain bilateral. So um, I will uh, question him, um, introduce myself, uh, confirm the patient details, uh, name their work, it's then uh, need to uh, take history and um, ask the patient um, the reason um, he presented um, about because uh, my chief complaint is um, knee pain, so I uh, asked um, when did it start, where is the exactly location, um, can the patient move uh, his leg, are there any obvious triggers for this, uh, like um, accident, trauma, or phone. Um, there is the pain radiate to anywhere else, what it was or better. Um, on the scale uh, 0 to 10, how severe is the pain? Um, ask uh, any numbness or tingling, any swelling, um, any limit uh, or stupid uh, in the morning. Um, is the skin red or is the skin uh, red and uh, warm? 
um, ask how far the patient can uh, walk. Ask um, and does, does the patient uh, had anything like this before? Um, any allergies? Um, any treatment or medication? Um, recently, um, ask any uh, surgery before. Um, as a history of um, diabetes, um, heart problem, and uh, especially psoriasis. Um, ask about uh, dress food in uh, life because uh, dress is a factor uh, of um, psoriasis. Um, arrested. Um, about social history, ask uh, about um, alcohol assumption. Um, using tobacco, um, any member of um, his uh, family, family has the same problem, um, family history of uh, psoriasis. Next, I uh, will, I will um, perform a uh, physical examination. Um, first of all, um, check the patient's uh, vital sign. Measure the blood pressure, temperature, pulse, and respiratory rate. Um, uh, examine um, cardiovascular and respiratory uh, system about uh, muscular skeletal. I will uh, look in for scar, swelling, um, red skin, um, and uh, skin lesion because the patient uh, has a history of uh, psoriasis. Um, Prepare the temperature um, and uh, you know, is it um, warm or cold? Um, check the patient's range of motion in uh, both sides uh, and uh, compare it. Um, because the patient um, had a history of psoriasis and uh, um, on physical examination, um, he had um, inflammation of uh, his joint. So um, my first diagnosis is um, psoriasis, ar arrested. Um, my dif differential di diagnosis is um, rheumatoid. Uh, arrested, um, also arrested, and the last one is uh, septic, arrested. So I order um, blood test um, to uh, rule out the septic, uh, arrested, um, rheumatic uh, factor to uh, exclude the uh, rheumatic, um, ar arrested. Um, and uh, need X-ray to um, find um, sign of um, bony erosion. Um, about treatment plan, I um, about treatment plan. Um, will I will uh, um, recommend um, NSAIDs and uh, exercise. NSAIDs. And exercise. Okay. Yeah. Know. If, if NSAID uh, doesn't work, I will uh, recommend uh, corticosteroid and uh, or methotrexate. Methotrexate. If yeah. methotrexate doesn't work, what would you do? Um, I will try with um, sulfasalazine. Sulfasalazine. They're the same class. Um, okay, class. If somebody present with psoriatic arthritis, and, and I'd like you to uh, spell this correctly, arthritis. So that I saw that many of you have problem or challenge with this pronunciation. So arthritis, do slowly. If the patient present with psoriatic arthritis, and not respond to methotrexate, not respond to sulfur allergen, what would you do? What would you do? Okay. 
All right, so uh, I give you another take home point, okay? Um, we will give other link map, other limo map or team mirror. Okay. Other label map is uh, the monochrome. All right. So, um, let me uh, summarize today and uh, give you a quick feedback about the last case. Sorry, Arthur, I'll try this. The key point is if somebody present with psoriasis for a number of years and the patient present with joint pain, you may concern there's progression of uncontrolled psoriasis and and they may lead to joy problems. Psoriasis, is, it's very common in the US. It's 1%. 1% means 100 people will have one, two people have the problems. And we think that psoriasis, up to 50%, half of them will have psoriasis arthritis. So think about it. So potentially, that's about, if you think about the US population, it's 300 million. You are talking about 3 million people with psoriasis, and now 1.5 million with sorry out of arthritis okay that's a lot of people in vietnam i i think psoriasis is quite common too at least from what i learned from my colleagues from vietnam so keep it in mind uh they can progress from the skin to joint disease all right uh, i left off the dinner dr long for our comments about today's and then i'll give you some key points for each case i like you to take note for that because there are 15 pearls that i like to show you okay Go ahead, and do our, uh, Dr. Long. Uh, Dr. Long. <laughs> um, I writing ready. I saw this last uh, today. We do very good for time because I take time out for every case. We not take over time. And all the way, I saw a student refer. Uh, homework very good and uh, English more improved. The last game, Momitri, compare for, for last ago, she do very good today. Thank How you. about ending? Okay, first one that um, really you have, you just think about the first day you come here and now. I. I, I believe that you feel very confident to check the medical history, even though that you still not concentrate uh, logically, but you feel more confident about that. You know what to do. That's, that's a good thing. Uh, just one something I would like to, to ask you, because I'm just wondering, when with a physical examination, usually that you go to uh, take right to side, that's correct. And then you go to systematically like uh, cardiovascular, respiratory, something like that. In my way, usually that I will go to take the physical examination at the, in the chip complaint first. Usually that I just look at the pain or the churn or the something. Then after that, I go back to the system, the other system. Right? Because you do that, I, I believe that the patient don't like it because they, they, they come to the hospital with a concern and you're looking something else, elsewhere. Right? You should do the physical examination right away related to the chip complaint before you go to the other system. So that's, that's my opinion. Yeah? Some, of, some of you do, do in my way, but most of you that just, you know, you go to like that. I think it's, a, it's like in the textbook, yeah? it's not good at all. Thanks. All right, so here's my feedback. And before I give you a pearls for each case, and I like you to remember because this is my module, my comment is many of you are very rich. You have a lot of money because you order MRI all the times, CT, and I don't know, but to me, even in the US, we, we still, I try to limit the number of MRI. And believe it or not, uh, there's many of them are not indicated. So the number one thing you guys think about today, class is history again, and then the exam will tell you a lot. You may not, or in some cases, for example, lower back pain, you don't need to order MRI, X-ray, or CT. Okay, that's the first thing. Second, speak slow. Remember the very first one, I mean, 
our presenter speak really fast. And then I count how many times he said, you know, you know, and then slowly toward the end, you guys see how much he improved. So my take home point for you guys, speak slow and focus. Once you keep that impression to your patient, they will trust you. The way that you speak will tell a lot about how much you know. Don't speak fast. All right, ready? So let's, uh, I walk to you um, the 15 case with one life each. The number one case we're talking about uh, a 28 years old male with IV drug user present with a day history of late knee pain. You make sure he does not have endocarditis. Okay, that's the okay, case number one. Now, case number two, a 47 years old female, she have rheumatoid arthritis. The key point for this one is you like to make sure that the patient did not have erosion on the exam or x-ray because if the patient had erosion, you will go ahead with more aggressive treatments. You like to prevent the joint deformities. You like to prevent that in the future, her hand look like this. All right. So in rheumatoid arthritis, it's so crucial that you look on the x-ray, no erosion versus erosion because treatment, very different. And someone can sue you in the US if the patient have their joint problem. All right, next case. Uh, this is the common, common classic picture of a gout presentation with CHF presented at hospital, having diuretic, right? Take a lot of fluid out and then have joint pain. So make sure you know this and you think about what is the next or consequence um, disease the patient may have. All right, the next one is we'll talk about uh, adult onset to disease. Think about it as a flavor. Uh, I don't think you will see it in Vietnam anyway. Next one is female with um, joy problem, likely uh, gonorrhea related. And make sure that you check her public exam, make sure check for all the STD. Because uh, let me tell you this, if the patient have gonorrhea, it is very likely that she may have syphilis or she may have all the type of STD. Your job as a doctor is to check, remember whenever you check the STD, check all of them. Don't leave one behind, okay? And, and what are they, HPV, and I'm sorry, HIV, okay, syphilis, gonorrhea, herpes. Okay, so don't, make sure you check, and then when you check that, ask about their partner. So that's something I forgot to mention about ask her partner because you need to treat her partner as well. All right, the next case is we talk about common, common, your grandma or your grandfather have OA. What would you do? Well, try to avoid NSAID because you may shut down your grandma kidney. Okay, don't give her a leave or ibuprofen because next day your grandma will may end up in the hospital because acute kidney injury. Don't do that. Give her paracetamol and walk her. Để con dẫn bà nội đi. Okay, walk her around and that improve her pain. Okay, so that's very common in Vietnam. And then next one, we're talking about a lupus patient with joy pain. So lupus arthritis is quite common, but you like to make sure that this is not something else, such as rheumatoid arthritis or um, Shoten disease. Next one, a guy with prostate cancer even he received treatments, even he finished everything. Present with back pain, your number one check is, did he have recurrent cancer or bony metastasis? So back pain, it sounds like, okay, back pain, but he may have recurrent cancer. So that's the take home point for that case. And then the next one is um, the guy with low back pain. Come on, some of you have this back pain already. So conservative treatment, no x-ray, nothing else. Just give him some breath, he will do better. Uh, the next case we talk about at 78 years old, grandma again, and she shortened her gait because she have osteoporotic fracture. Make sure that you initiate biphosphonate is in the treatment plan and ask your grandma take this medication correctly because as I say, the absorption rate is very low. All right, the next one uh, with the guy with ankylosing spondylitis. This is a gentleman for a guy 24 years old, unlikely he have back pain. 
okay? If some of you are 24 years old guys and not normal, very unlikely. So if a guy present with chronic back pain, morning stiffness, you have to walk him out. All right, the next one is uh, a runner. Think about it. Some of the history will tell you already the diagnosis and bursitis is so common, so common in athletic people, okay? I tell you, if you go to the gym today, you will have some joy pain next day. Because if you never exercise, and today you exercise a lot, try to impress your girlfriend, your boyfriend, whoever, you will have joy pain for sure, okay? How do I know? Because I have that too, okay? So um, let me tell you, uh, the next case is uh, 70 years old female uh, with shoulder. Make sure that you ask the patient to take out their shirt uh, for male versus female and look for both of them. And rotator cup injury, it's, it's quite simple. There's only four muscles. Make sure you know all four of them, okay? And then the next K is a child. Make sure you ask patient, parents, okay? Don't ignore the parents. Ask parents, and I think our presenter did an excellent job. Ask parents. And then you compare, you ask the kid. And one of the things that I usually do with kids is you just play with them. Say, hey, um, can I play? walk you to the can I show you something and then you play with the kid and you observe how the kid doing if the kid can walk can run then you say fine you know she's she doing okay most likely okay if the kid cannot run and she or he sit that's serious okay so that's one thing and the last thing about sorry I told you it's very common and the disease can progress from skin to joy okay that are 15 cases for the day questions We good? All right, guys, I hope you enjoy today and uh, hope you enjoy the joy and then the last module of skin and fever. And uh, I don't know when is my next one, but uh, I'm looking forward to see you guys again. Thank you, Andin. Thank you, everyone. You have a nice day. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think just a, a moment. Next time, next week, uh, we have a little bit chance. Instead of uh, Dr. Mindo with the uh, hypertension and um, a shock, uh, Dr. Brian Nguyen will present with you diabetes. Uh, he will give you some homework, exercise, something before we come, okay? So as usual, I just uh, announced you about which chance the topic for next week, okay? That's it. All right, thank you guys. Okay, See bye you. Bye. If you have any questions, uh, uh, feel free to post your question on Facebook, okay? And share with us, thank okay. you.